There's still some question about what's going on, but I think there are only two possibilities. Either China is acting like uh, Hitler or acting worse than Hitler. If it's a genocide, then they're acting like Hitler. If it's a genocide in which they're killing them and using their parts and selling them, it's worse than Hitler. Why do we do business with China? Why do we do business with China? Seriously. But I'm not going to ignore it. As given that China killed my son, I think I might mention that they're involved in a Nazi-like Holocaust, and we're just doing business with them like it's nothing. That's actually happening. In your lifetime, you're part of a system that is doing business with China while they do genocide on their own population. Or they're selling their population for parts. One of those two things. And we're just doing business with them. While they're killing 50,000 Americans a year with their fentanyl, intentionally, right in front of us. No doubt about it. Uh, When I say China killed my son, there's somebody asking about this. Uh, My stepson died of a uh, fentanyl overdose a year ago. And that fentanyl comes from China. Now let me ask you this. Given that we just saw uh, amounts of fentanyl in the United States that could wipe out every person in a state, if not the whole country, clearly these are weapons of mass destruction. Clearly the Mexican government is outgunned. And clearly it's killing 50,000 people a year in our country. And we know the name of the guy. And probably we could locate some assets owned by the cartel. Why are we not going in there militarily? Now, I assume we're trying other mechanisms, but I would say we are completely clear to send a, send drones in there and take out as much of the cartels as we want. I, and, and in fact, I would love that conversation. I would love the Mexican government to say to us, damn it, United States, why are you defying our sovereignty? Well, I'll tell you. It's because you lost your sovereignty. You don't have any sovereignty. If the, if the cartel can decide who goes to jail and who doesn't, there's no Mexican government. Why, why should we please the Mexican government where it doesn't exist? And in the cartel-held territories, there's no Mexican government. Lately, and I think yesterday even, I'd been saying that I was skeptical about all these stories of China killing people to make transplants available for other people. The people that they would be allegedly killing were prisoners of some sort, political or otherwise. And I said to myself, really? (laughs) They're keeping people alive and then just taking their parts and giving them to other people? And my my take on that was, "Mm, that doesn't sound totally right. And then, as is often the case, and by the way, I talk about this in my book, Loser Think. (laughs) One of the uh, tips in this book is if you don't know how to do something right, try doing it wrong in public. (laughs) And watch how much free advice you get. (laughs) I do this all the time. You've seen it probably probably a dozen times if you watch this Periscope. But one of the things that I did wrong in public, apparently, was my opinion that the Chinese organ transplant story is probably more BS than true. And that attracted, that attracted a, lot of, uh, a lot of advice and information. So here's my current thinking on it. So what I'd heard was, and this was the part I was skeptical about, that the reason people believe this was happening, all these killing people just for their organs, is that the schedule for getting an organ over there was so short. And I thought to myself, that's it? That's all you know? All you know is that it's easy to get an organ? Uh, could, Could be other reasons. One reason could be it's not really that easy. You just heard it was, or it was easy for some people who paid a lot of money to go to the top of the list. Maybe you heard it's easy, but it's not really easy. So that was my assumption, is that probably just the information is wrong. 
Because it seemed to me that you would have some kind of, you know, direct, um, direct observation. Somebody would say, oh, yeah, we do it at this hospital or something like that. But I heard some stories yesterday. I'm going to just put them all together for you. And then you can decide whether China has an ongoing massive operation to kill people on demand for organs. All right, here's what you need to know. Um, a few years ago, I, a friend of mine needed a heart transplant. So I learned a little bit about the system. If you're on the list to get a heart transplant, you don't necessarily get the heart just because you're at the top of the list and one becomes available because there are other variables. One of the variables is how far away you are and how quickly you could get to the hospital for the operation. So my friend who was not at the top of the list and not really even very close to the top of the list probably would have been dead in a year or so, uh, got lucky, and I hate to say that, because his luck depended on somebody else dying in just the right place at just the right time. So he gets a phone call, and they say, we got a heart. Come in, and, and we'll, uh, we'll put you on the table right away. And he goes, and he was still, he could drive at that point. You know, his heart was failing, but he was still reasonably functional. He had his car, and he said, all right, I'll, I'll drive right in. And they said, no. We're going to send an ambulance. Time, time is so critical that we don't want you driving your own car here. It won't be fast enough. We're going to have an ambulance meet you at the restaurant where you're eating, and we'll take you directly to the hospital, put you right on the table. All right. Now, that's not at all unusual, that the timing is so critical that you can actually move to the top of the list just by being in the right place and having the right characteristics that make you ready for the operation. Um, Here's another fact I learned. Do you know what you can sell an organ for? (laughs) Apparently in China, uh, it could be over $100,000 for an organ, a major organ. How many parts can you get from one dead guy? You can get a lot of parts, right? One dead guy could sell one organ for $100,000, how much is the entire dead guy worth? What, a million dollars? Something like that? But let's let's cut it in half. Let's say uh, a dead guy, if you were selling that dead person's organs, maybe half a million dollars. What is half a million dollars worth in China? Well, half a million dollars. It's worth a lot anywhere. Would people do things illegal for half a million dollars? And remember, that's just one body. If, if, if this is happening the way it's alleged, it's a whole operation. One of the stories I heard is that somebody who was a, an organ tourist went there um, to get a kidney, but had some kind of compatibility issue, and so had to get another operation, and another, and another, and actually had eight kidney transplants, each one with a new kidney, until the eighth one was compatible and worked. If it's true that China is killing people on demand for organs, that one guy caused eight people to be murdered for their organs. Maybe they would have been killed anyway. Never know. But that's the sort of thing that's being alleged. And again, I'm just going to say alleged until I watch it with my own eyes. But I'll give you the the data. So, uh, as I often say, I think I said it in Win Bigly, um, when you have a situation where somebody can make a lot of money and they have a low chance of getting caught, you always have bad behavior. There there probably will never be an, an exception to this rule. Huge upside potential gain, financial, let's say, and a very low chance of getting in trouble. How often does that cause bad behavior? 100% of the time. So we have the setup for it to cause trouble 100% of the time, unless the government was actively cracking down on it. And all of the evidence suggests there's nothing like that happening. So you got that. So the money is there, the incentive is there, and there apparently is a large supply of prisoners because there's some suggestion that the military or maybe the military prisons, uh, or at least some connection to the military, have something to do with it. The rumors are also that the Falun Gong um, 
religious organization, if you can call it that. They're sort of, uh, I don't know what to call them exactly, cult, religion, movement. But the, uh, the, uh, so the thought is that they're using the people that they're oppressing for political reasons. They're just using them for parts and cutting them up and selling them. So that's the allegation. Now, um, my first thought was, well, are we sure that just because people can get things whenever they want them, that that's what that really means? Because I, I still think there are two possibilities here. All right? There's still two possibilities. One is that they're killing people on demand. So, hey, we weren't going to kill you anyway. We weren't going to kill you before. But now we're going to kill you because we need your parts. So that's one possibility and strongly suggested by all the evidence. But there is one other possibility. Okay, let's see if you can guess. What is the other possibility that would explain the same set of facts but is not China killing people just for parts, prisoners, let's say? There's one other explanation. Can you think of it? Uh, and they can't be already dead. They have to be basically brain brain dead and body alive, or or you kill them just for the parts. Otherwise, you can't take a dead person and take their and take their parts and sell them. The, the parts are no good if they're already dead. Um, that is correct. Somebody has guessed. Somebody guessed accurately. The other possibility is that they murder so many people not murder, but let's say death sentence. The other possibility is that they kill so many people routinely that they have an enormous pool of parts because they were going to kill them anyway. So you now, if they were going to kill them anyway, and let's say in China, maybe they don't have any rights if they're a prisoner. I don't know what the deal is. Then maybe they can just say, well, it's wasted parts. We were going to kill them anyway. So in that case, the real, the real issue is the genocide. So there are only two possibilities that I can think of. There may be other possibilities. Maybe somebody will come up with one. But the two I can think of is that they're killing people for parts or there's such a massive genocide that's going on as a routine amount of business that they're just saying, well, we have all these parts sitting around. Might as well sell them. And then again, the people who are saying they um, they can get organs on demand are probably rich people. So it might not be that anybody can get a part on demand. It could be only rich people because they're paying a lot of money, which would mean if you had tons of people you're executing anyway and you don't have that many rich people, all the rich people could get a part on demand without anything happening that would suggest they're doing it just for the organs. So there's still some question about what's going on, but I think there are only two possibilities. Either China is acting like uh, Hitler, or acting worse than Hitler. If it's a genocide, then they're acting like Hitler. If it's a genocide in which they're killing them and using their parts and selling them, it's worse than Hitler. Do you feel me? If all he's doing is genocide, that's the Holocaust. That's, that's equal to Hitler. But if they're also selling the parts and part of it is financial, it might be a little worse. So those are the two possibilities. Why do we do business with China? Why do we do business with China? Seriously. Oh, by the way, I said yesterday that somebody reported that Dilbert.com was blocked in China. And then I got a second report from somebody also in China who said it is not. Uh, A third person said it's possible that both are true. It may be blocked in some places and not in others. So we still don't know if Dilbert.com is blocked. But if I'm not, I'm going to work on getting blocked because uh, if you want to ignore a Holocaust, I guess that's on you. (laughs) But I'm not going to ignore it. Given that China killed my son, I think I might mention that they're involved in a Nazi-like Holocaust. And we're just doing business with them like it's nothing. That's actually happening. In your lifetime, you're part of a system that is doing business with China while they do genocide on their own population. 
or they're selling their population for parts. One of those two things. And we're just doing business with them. While they're killing 50,000 Americans a year with their fentanyl, intentionally, right in front of us. No doubt about it. Uh, When I say China killed my son, there's somebody asking about this. Uh, My stepson died of a uh, fentanyl overdose a year ago, and that fentanyl comes from China. Here's a little update. Do you remember the story about the big shootout between the cartel and uh, the Mexican police and the cartel won? The Mexican police had picked up the son of of El Chapo, I guess El Chapo's son was the new head of the cartel. The police pick him up, and the cartel had so much firepower that they brought in immediately trucks, you know, technicals and trucks with machine guns and and stuff, that they actually outgunned the police, and the police released him. And then yesterday I found out that the reason that uh, El, El Chapo's son was picked up is, wait for it, he was starting, he was in charge of the fentanyl. So the main, I think the main, he might have been one of the main or the main fentanyl connection, the Chinese fentanyl goes to Mexican cartels first and then they ship it into the United States. But this guy seemed to be one of, if not the main fentanyl guy in China. So he was picked up because the, Ameri- the, because the United States asked for extradition. So he was whatever the legal process is. So the Mexicans were picking him up for the United States, but they got outgunned. Now, let me ask you this. Given that we just saw uh, amounts of fentanyl in the United States that could wipe out every person in a state, if not the whole country, clearly these are weapons of mass destruction. Clearly the Mexican government is outgunned. And clearly it's killing 50,000 people a year in our country. And we know the name of the guy. And probably we could locate some assets owned by the cartel. Why are we not going in there militarily? Now, I assume we're trying other mechanisms. But I would say we are completely clear to send, a, send drones in there and take out as much of the cartels as we want. I... And in fact, I would love that conversation. I would love the Mexican government to say to us, damn it, United States, why are you defying our sovereignty? Well, I'll tell you, it's because you lost your sovereignty. You don't have any sovereignty. If the, if the cartel can decide who goes to jail and who doesn't, there's no Mexican government. Why, why should we please the Mexican government where it doesn't exist? And in the cartel-held territories, there's no Mexican government. So if anybody wants to complain about us droning the cartels, it would have to be the cartels. There it is. So, so I'm in favor of military action against the cartels. But I'm sure there's lots more to know that I don't know.